Yeah, and we're live. Happy Tuesday evening. Welcome to E Church Live. I'm Judy. And you're. I'm Rick. <laughs> Rick. I'm Rick. <laughs> <laughs> and we're Rick and Judy. And this is E Church Live. And you are you, and I am me, and we are we. Yes. Now we're ready to go into E Church. You guys come on in, grab a seat. Um, hope you got your snacks, your drinks ready, and you're ready to have just a good old fun time. Uh, discussing the wonderful, beautiful things of our gracious God. Hi, Alyssa. You new mommy. The beautiful yeah, little girl. she's a new mommy. Hi, wonderful. Michelle. Tina. Hey, Paul. Hey, Beth. Hey, Michelle. Our friend Michelle. Good to see you. Um, so tonight is Tuesday. It's hey, Sammy. Uh, November 19th, and we're having eChurch live. And our eChurch... Tonight is kind of a, a question we've had uh, recently. Yeah, something we've been talking about mm -hmm. um, too. And it's a very broad subject and a very broad term. Mm -hmm. But uh, you may have seen that we've titled this, uh, what do we title? What is religion? <laughs> yeah, or what do we like mean that. by religion? And so this will be one. We, we invite your comments and your input into this um, because what we're talking about is not, it can't be brought down to just a simple. Um, uh, dictionary definition, but the dictionary definition, or the actually the the Greek word for religion in the Bible, religion is not used a lot in the in the Bible. The, James used it, and, and King James, James himself <laughs> didn't use it. He he, you know, that was written in Greek, but in the King James Bible, the word religion is mentioned uh, in two verses there in the book of James, chapter one, and it goes like this. Okay. It says, if any of you thinks that he is religious and he doesn't bridle his tongue, but deceives his own heart, this one's religious is useless. This one's religion. This one's religion is useless. Mm -hmm. Pure and undefiled religion before God and the Father is this, to visit orphans and widows in their trouble and to keep yourself unspotted from the world. So that's where we find that word religion actually used in a, uh, a standard Bible. Mm. Um, the word li literally is threskia in Greek, threskia, threskia, and it means uh, ceremonial observance. Mm. So he's saying there, you know, if you're if you're doing these things and not the, then your ceremonial observances are in vain, and so that kind of brings us to what uh, what we know is the difference between what we mean when we say religion we're 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 really talking about a uh, a set of ceremonial uh, observances or a set of beliefs or a moral code even outside of uh, a thriving heart beating relationship with god uh, the person of god um, you know paul goes to uh, goes to the greeks and he's he preaches this sermon on mars hill and he talks about how he was wondering how was he going to get to these intellectual people, but they have these, these all these uh, idols and, and monuments to gods, and they have all these different gods. But there's 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 one place where they say to the unknown god, you know, not the one that we can identify with any of our words or any of our our name tags, but to the unknown god. So Paul gets the idea, he goes, ha, that's who I'm talking about, the unknown god, the god that you don't know. And so then he goes into the, the message, the gospel, and showing them how they can know, mm -hmm. uh, declaring to them how they can know God. So what we're talking about really, uh, when, we, when we mention religion, normally we're talking about knowing God versus um, knowing, anything else. <laughs> or, or knowing about God. Or knowing about God and just being involved in good works, uh, religious creed or code without really knowing God. Mm -hmm. um, we talk about it a lot. We use that word a lot. And, and we wanted to talk about it because it's a broad term that we throw out there a lot. A lot of people that run in the circles we do kind of understand what we're talking about. We're talking about uh, uh, having a religion versus a relationship. There's a lot of religions in the world. Yeah. Um, any kind of, of, of set of beliefs or moral codes could be uh, quote a religion to somebody. Someone can believe in, and call themselves an atheist, and say they believe in it religiously. <laughs> you yeah. know that means that they're devoted yeah. uh, to and, it. And I think for us, as we we talk to a lot of different kinds of people, we don't ever want to get stuck in um, 
like a Christianese lingo that some of us know what we're referring to. And then others who are genuinely curious might think, well, what do you mean you, you know, when you talk that way about religion, I'm religious. So why are you, and they're not seeing. Because uh, they see it as a good thing. We were in a meeting uh, recently and, and somebody who's new to what we were, were teaching, you know, he, he made a comment, real happy, you know, said, mm-hmm. well, Rick's going to give us religion tonight. And he meant it in a positive way. Yeah. And because I'm not used to hearing that, I said, no, I'll give you anything but religion. <laughs> you know, I'm not going to give you religion. And then he's like, well, confused, what are you going to give brother. us? You yeah. know, but I thought that's why we were here because he, he saw it as, 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 as something good. Mm-hmm. And, uh, but those of us, most of us that have had, that have, that have practiced a devotion and then really we got a revelation on the love of God and we fell in love with God and we began to really know the person of God or at least begin to to interact with him. A, a relationship, really, I guess is the best word we can use. We know that this is that's different from what we were doing before. Yeah. And so we, we normally will tag that as our religion that we were following as opposed to... Um, the relationship that we enjoy that's really heartfelt and it's mm-hmm. we really feel like we're knowing or coming to know the person mm-hmm. of God and not like you said just knowing about God so that's what we mean when we say that we we, we, we were talking about how maybe we ought to um, define it in, in something that's more specific maybe we're talking about or clarify yeah, yeah. maybe we're, you know maybe we should use a term uh, more often like um, uh, well, performance oriented or uh, ritual maybe ritual would be mm-hmm. would be another one ritual as opposed to relationship yeah um, I think it's difficult because there are some people who follow rituals right. but also have a relationship right. with God so so it's not so that's see there there again it's hard yeah. <laughs> so, so there are people who um, are not purely following ritual if you're if you're purely following a ritual or a set of rules without a relationship i would say that would probably be what we would turn yeah the evil is not in the relation is not in the the practice of the ritual itself because you you can have a ritual of getting up and talking to god every morning yeah you know that just becomes your morning ritual i have a ritual of brushing my teeth in the morning you know (laughs) so the, the ritual in itself right that's a good point it's not bad in itself uh, we just want to make sure nothing takes the place of enjoying mm-hmm. the personal knowing of God. Hey, Lisa from Midland. We miss you. Yeah. How are you? We love Lisa. Michelle says we're talking about legalism, legalism versus, versus grace. grace. Really, that's 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 a big part of that. It's really a good way of saying that. That's really, I think, what we mean is legalism, mm-hmm. um, to where we're trusting in um, our works, the legality uh-huh. of the laws that we're following as opposed to a spirit. You know, Jesus didn't just give us a code to follow. The Pharisees had a code to follow. He gave us the spirit, which is something more than a, a set, of, a system of beliefs oh, yeah. or a set of rules to follow. He gave us something that we could flow in and, you know, operate in and navigate in and live life in and have relationships in. It's like, it's a lot more than follow these rules and you'll get this or follow this system and you'll... Because because if if that were the case, if following the rules were it, he would have just given us rules. Mm -hmm. He would, I mean, we already had a bunch of them before he came. But he would have given us, quote, the right rules, you know, if that's what it was. Um, but he knows that doesn't do it. And and, and uh, I like to say it a lot that we that giving a law, a command or a set of rules of behavior does not empower the person to be able to do that. So he knew, like you said, we he knew we needed something uh, bigger, more powerful than a set of rules mm-hmm. to, to live by just a code to live by, we needed a new nature. We he, we needed him to live in us and be a part of us, to come mm-hmm. and be one with us and be a part of us. Mm-hmm. And that would change things from the inside out. Sure. There it becomes organic and relational. 
Um, and you know, Michelle mentioned the legalism. Another thing about the legalism is it legalism always points it back to us. It's always on us to perform the legalities of our religion, yeah. a religion that promises this if you perform that. Uh-huh. And what we have is a relationship like like, like this. Uh-huh. We don't operate on a merit system, uh-huh. you know. Uh, you'll you'll love me and be good to me if I do these things. It's 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 organic. It's relational. So whatever we're going through, God is with us, going through it with us. He's not demanding like you better do these certain things and I'll show up. You know, he'll... he he doesn't even care about that. There's you know there's no power in that in itself. The power is in Him living in us. Yeah, and that's why we like to point everybody to that 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 is that it's it's. Him in us, His love in us, His nature giving us a new nature, and that's mm-hmm. where the power is. So Beth uh, points this out, and I think this is a good point. She says, like the feasts the Jews had, they they were a ritual, and they pointed to Jesus. But I imagine for some of them, it was a ritual. So you see how it started out as something really good. A ritual was designed to help you remember. You know, you have the ritual of Passover and each of the foods meant one thing. And every year they participated in that ritual to remind them of the goodness of God. Mm -hmm. Nothing wrong with that. That's awesome. It's when it becomes a... A a, a work where it becomes... uh, The base... That the work... the, The act of the ritual itself becomes a basis uh, for you to earn. I've checked off everything that I'm supposed to do, and I did it, so I'm good. Right. You know? And that becomes a merit thing, where you think we're earning something, or we're almost like we're buying blessing or favor, uh, or even in some cases people would think salvation mm-hmm. uh, from God. And, it, and, it, and it's, it's all over the world. It goes to you know religions that would offer human sacrifice. It, it, and it's all because they think that what they do will bring uh, good favor from God. There's, mm-hmm. you know, the Mayans believed that it was the, that it was the, the blood flow, that it, was, that, that it was human blood flowing that actually caused the sun to keep moving across the sky. And they, they were afraid that if they stopped that, that it wouldn't happen anymore. So they just kept finding people to sacrifice, you know, mm-hmm. and, and it's all about what we do is what makes these things happen. Yeah. The other thing I wanted to really say or make mention of is that it's not that a certain religion like you know we could name different religions baptist catholic uh you know Mm, presbyterian but i'm just saying even those christian ones we're not naming a particular religion and saying or denomination and saying that one is religious. Right. When we say, and when we say religion, we don't mean denominations. Yeah, because within each re- religion, there's people who are legalistic in it, and there's people who have genuine yeah. relationships in it. So it's more about the heart of the person and the individual yeah. rather than the group. Just like being non-denominational doesn't make you anything <laughs> either. There's the same thing. Yeah. Uh, in in that, it all is the relationship. It's it's you and your loving heavenly father and we're empowered by that the love and the approval of the father that we that we know this is why we talk about his love and his grace all the time it always comes down to this Get is to that know him. Ha- yeah. knowing him because when you know him and and that approval of the father that's empowering mm-hmm. to you yeah um, this the relationship with god is the one thing that fulfills He's the, he's the one who fills everything in everybody, according to Philly, uh, Ephesians. And Megan, she said, that's why it never worked for the priests of the old order. You know, right. it's, it's almost like, um, mm-hmm. you know, Jesus came because they were getting stuck in that sort of legalistic, dead kind of religion. It doesn't yeah. produce life. It doesn't produce hope. It doesn't really help anyone. Mm-hmm. It just provides standards right. it that was demand illegal. people to uh, that which was meant to point to point to Jesus it was it was it was it was just it was right and ritual and uh you know Jesus came because that wasn't good enough that Hebrew says finding fault with that first covenant <laughs> but you know is because of the weakness of man's flesh nobody can perform enough religion to to really uh earn merit anything from mm-hmm. God there has to be uh, the joy of it comes from the relationship. You know, you're not going to find the joy because you did, 
you know, got all these ducks in a row or you did A, B, C, D and yeah. somebody promised you if you do those things, you'll get joy. You get joy from, from him. He fills your heart with joy. Right. Hi, Crystal. Michelle said, knowing the fullness of Christ, which... Ephesians yeah. 3, but you know, I, you know the, the Ephesians 3, 19, I pray that you would know the love of God so you can be filled with all the fullness mm -hmm. of Christ. And that would really bring it down to that. Really, we're talking about love versus anything else <laughs> yeah. that you may be trying um, in a way of trying to relate to God. I think that's another part of it is that, that religion will do things that, that try to uh, get, try to get you to relate to God or help you to relate to God mm -hmm. um, uh, rather than actually knowing God. Mm -hmm. uh, what I have found out uh, personally is, um, is in my life that the more I've come to actually know God, the less, uh, the less ritual that I needed. Um, there were, there have been many things that I've done r ritually and, and they were a, a help to me in that, that time. I felt like it, it but, um, I find out that as I know him, there's a, there's an open communication that goes on. So for me personally, like I won't find myself checking into the prayer closet on a regular basis. That's me personally because of relationship. Your relationship might have you doing something different, mm -hmm. but, uh, uh, but we're really talking about anything that's uh, in place of, mm -hmm. in place of knowing and really enjoying this God. This is why, why we minister and have, do things like e-church and all this, because this thing is so enjoyable. Knowing God, mm -hmm. and, and when I say knowing God, I'm not saying coming to know everything there is about God and not that we get an eternity to keep finding out about him. Uh, knowing this much about God is enough to fill your heart with joy. Knowing not about God, excuse me, knowing him that much, um, as a person, somebody that when you're, you, you know him as someone who's with you, who cares for you, who loves you unconditionally, who doesn't shame you, who's very, very gracious, um, uh, to you, uh, knowing, having all of that in your life, you can bear, anything. The Bible mm -hmm. says love bears everything. Mm -hmm. uh, you can do that. So, so we're talking about that something that really empowers, uh, rather than also rather than things that are not qu quite complete. Mm -hmm. Um, they don't, they don't really satisfy and fulfill. They just kind of lead you like you're reaching for a carrot on a string, mm -hmm. uh, you know, but we're not talking about, we, we don't want anyone to think that we're talking about, uh, uh, denominational belief because there's people that know God in all denominations. There's people that don't. Um, and, uh, and that doesn't, that doesn't condemn or, or elevate any, any of the denominations or religions themselves. It's just, just how it is. It's a personal thing. So when we say religion, we're not talking about, we're not even really t necessarily talking about organized anything. That's another thing is this relationship with God. It doesn't make us angry. You know, because we hear a lot of people say to get, when they talk about actually talk about religion or organized religion or the institute of religion. While it while while those things are not a replacement for knowing the Lord at any at in at any way in any way, everybody's free to go and find God, and and we don't have to be angry. The wrath of man does not work the righteousness of God. Um, I've been taught many things in my Christian walk that now I look at them and I say, you know, that was not true. That was not really accurate. Um, I have taught things in my Christian walk and ministry as a younger man that I look at now and I say, you know what? That wasn't accurate. That wasn't really true what I said about God. Um, so I'm certainly not angry with myself over doing that. Uh, I can't be. It doesn't, you know, doesn't do any good. And I understand everybody else. Most of them are trying to do the best they can. And so... Uh, you know, we don't want to, when we talk about, when we say things like, well, religion won't treat, teach you that we're not trying to get everybody all riled, riled up against anybody involved in organized religion at, yeah. at all, because we're here, we love people. And that's what the relationship does. Mm -hmm. It does something to your heart to where it takes out pain. It takes out the anger. It takes out the bitterness that we may, may have had. It's a beautiful, beautiful thing. And that's why we talk about something that goes beyond what so many people are struggling with 
in a religious sense, in a religious mm-hmm. mindset, trying to do the right things, trying to, you know, fulfill whatever needs to be fulfilled. And we say, Jesus took care of all of that. He just went past everyone's moral codes, belief systems, everybody's attempts at trying to define God and emulate God and all that. And he goes straight to it and he says, here, I'm doing all of this for you. What the law couldn't do, what your flesh couldn't do, I did by coming and dying for you. And I fulfilled every righteous requirement. That's Mm -hmm. Romans chapter eight, fulfilling every righteous requirement Mm -hmm. so that the blessing would come upon us. And that's relational that, that it takes all the pressure off of us to be, become, or do anything. It really is a free gift. I just wanted to tell you that Cindy Bloomer said hi. Cindy. Hi, Cindy. Um, Megan said something too that I wanted to to kind of compare it. Megan said, the more we see him in his oneness, the more like him we become in his identity. So you know how you say like, when when we're in Christ and Christ is in us, it's like we and Christ became one to the point where you can't separate either of them. But the more you focus on who he is and who you are with him, in oneness with you, mm-hmm. the more you become like him. That's so true. Right? You start acting that you start acting that out even outwardly. It starts to happen. Okay, and so you compare that to um, someone who teaches you if you do this, you'll please God, or if you don't do this, you know, that'll be good. You know, and, and sort of trying to manage that. That type of and we're, we're calling it religion, but that type is a, is a flesh system. Mm. It's a system that is made by man that makes sense to the flesh and mm. the carnal man. Like, mm. just tell me what to do and I'll do it. Mm-hmm. It really is way, a legalism. It's a, it's, yeah. it's a system of legality. Legality. Yeah. The yeah. other way is more of a, uh, well, it's a united oneness where you where you're thinking on the perfection of Jesus and how he combined with you makes you a new creation and, and you become uh, like that. So it's a different um, operation. It's yeah. a different it comes system. It comes from life. It comes from, from the person of Jesus. And, and the two passages that, that I think of immediately are first and second Corinthians three that says, uh, says, when we behold the glory of the Lord, says when the heart turns to the Lord, not any of these other things, but him, yeah. the veil's removed and we see the glory of the Lord. And when, and we, and it's like beholding a mirror, we see who we are. Colossians three says that when he is revealed, we also are revealed or unveiled with him in glory. In other words, when you see, when we see who he is, we see who we yeah. is <laughs> because like you said, because we become one. So how can we not? We're looking at him, the glory, the, the mystery is Christ mm-hmm. in us, which had, had always been that hope of glory. But now for us now, it's the glory yeah. that Christ revealed and Christ revealed in us sh- shows us who we are because the new creation is Christ in us, mm-hmm. not Christ, Christ here and us here somewhere inside us here. And us trying to get to Christ, you know, us trying to get to be. He did it all. Right. And we, we're not trying to unite with him. We're not trying to become, come into oneness with him at Mm -hmm. all. That's a, that's a lie. And, and, and legalism, transactional type, type of a transactional type of mentality will tell us what we do to get that. We don't and didn't do anything. Jesus did it all. He says, I'm coming to unite with you. While you're in your sins, I'm not saying change that so we can be together. He says, I'll change me. I'll come and take on your sin. I'll become that sin so I can be one with you. I'll, I'll, come, I'll become one with you in death. Mm-hmm. I'll do the whole thing and I'll raise from the dead. I'll come back from the dead and I'll come out of that grave. And when I do, you're coming out. Cause you're going to be with me. Mm-hmm. And that's, that's, that's how it is. He said, this is why I go. He says, so that where I am, you can be also. Mm-hmm. And so this relationship that we see right here, that's where it's all at. And that's, as you said, knowing this, it changes everything about who you are. You don't have to try to mm-hmm. become anymore. You know that you are yeah. and 
And as a man thinks in his heart, so is he. So you start, yeah. you start acting. You, you feel the love. You, you become aware of the love. So that love starts coming out of you. Mm-hmm. We, actually, we actually become the manifestation of Christ in this world. Mm-hmm. It's, yeah. it's powerful. It's beautiful. It's beautiful and it's very liberating. Well, we're not trying to become. We're operating out of what we are. Have become, yes. Crystal said yes, and it's a hard, and it's hard work. I know she's speaking from uh, experience where oh, you're yeah. trying to work your way uh, into God's good mm. graces. You never get there. Yeah, you can't do it. Yeah. Um, oh, I Jill I saying saying. something. Yeah. Here. Jill said, "I just got the thought. Even an Adam before the fall was outside of God, separate from Him. Wait." Yeah. Even Adam and Eve before the fall was outside of God and separate from him. We need God in us and we in him to be able to have a really close relationship. Even before the fall, they were weak. So us humans in any state can't be perfect when we have flesh. I guess there are two thoughts there. LOL. Yeah. But, but yeah, and that's very, very true. Adam, remember, Adam did not partake of the tree of life. Yeah. When we received Jesus, we did. He is. He came to give us that life, and He did. And so we have Him in us now, mm-hmm. and we don't hear Him in just walking outside in the cool of the day. We have, we have Him in us, and that's what changed it. That we needed that relationship, Him and us together. You know, Paul said, you know, when a man and wife uh, marry, the two become one flesh. This is a mystery, but I'm talking about Christ and His church. He said, mm-hmm. and so. So what we have is a relationship of oneness here. Mm-hmm. That's, a, that, that's a beautiful thing. And we, we chose to join together in this. In this thing, Jesus made the, did the choosing. He did the everything. And he came and he became one with us. And that's just mm-hmm. the way it is. And, 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 and all those who have received them, he gave them the right Mm-hmm. to be sons of God. Mm-hmm. And so the relationship beca- comes because it's, 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 it's us and him mm-hmm. together. That's all there is to it. The relationship was made yeah. by him. And, uh, and, he, and, and he says, you'll know the truth and the truth will make you free. So when you simply see this truth, that it's all, somebody mentioned, you know, uh, fullness, the fullness of God or the finished work that he really did. He finished the work and it's finished and it's done. Mm -hmm. And when you see that, when you look at that, you're looking at reality and it puts all the glory on him Mm -hmm. because all the work was on him and all the fulfillment was by him. And he left nothing for us to fulfill. What what do we do to work the works of God? He said, just believe on the one that he sent. I did it all. Just believe on the one that's been sent. Trust in the one that was sent. And so Trusting in someone is also relational. Yeah. It's relational. He didn't tell us to go and do anything but to trust in him, have yeah. faith in him. I think it's interesting too, in the uh, legalistic system, they are following along the tree of the knowledge of good and evil. Right. And I know Michelle is going to agree with me because I hear her say this a lot, but the tree of the knowledge of good and evil is the fallen tree. It's the tree that mm. brought man's fall. Right. And so what um, we call, we say religion, or you could say legalism, they rely on the tree of the knowledge of good and evil. Let's do good and avoid evil. It makes sense to our carnal minds. It It's what our flesh That's enjoys. That's where false religion began right there. And that's what we call religion. If they're still operating under that tree of the knowledge of good and evil, they're in the fallen world system trying to do the best they can. They're trying to do more good than they are evil, but it's still that system. Mm -hmm. What we have in Jesus is the tree of life. It's a, it's, it's a tree of life that elevates us above. And once you're in life, you're going to do good. You know, you're going to see good. You're going to uh, operate as God operates. It's just a different flow as mm. opposed to the, that wrestling. Well, right. The wrestling is, is what and... we're, we're talking about. See, why do people do evil? Why do, why, do, why do people steal? Why do people covet? Why do people hate? Why, why you know, all the things uh, that lustful, sinful, all that. Why do people do those things? Because of pain and unfulfillment. The love of God fills the heart. 
And that's why, and I saw where Jill mentioned, you know, when you know God that way, you don't want to sin. Uh, and, and the reason really is because you're full. So it, it doesn't become an issue. You don't have the need for selfish sinfulness. You don't have the need to covet because this love, I'm, I'm, I'm telling you, I think some of you know this, but if you don't, please hear that this love is the most beautiful, bountiful treasure there is. This fulfills it makes you wealthy, wealthy. And, and when, you, when, you, when you're aware of that, you don't have the pain. It casts out fear, the Bible says. You're not afraid. Uh, so you don't, you, know, you don't, the need to covet disappears. It's not, it's not an issue. The need for, 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 for being lustful is, is gone because your heart becomes fulfilled just by finding out that he loves you, mm-hmm. finding out who he is. It's, it, it's, it's so, it's relational. Mm-hmm. Jesus said, take my yoke and learn of me. Mm-hmm. Learn of me. I'm meek and I'm humble. You'll find rest mm-hmm. for your souls. And uh, uh, so that's the truth that he was talking about that would make you free. Jesus came to reveal the Father. And he said, if you want to see the Father, look at me. If you've yeah. seen, The way he said it was, if you've seen me, you have seen the Father. Sure. And he was the, the full expression of, of God and is that in our hearts now. And so it, see, another thing, religion, religion deals with, it tries to deal with sin. Mm -hmm. It has, it has, um, ways that it tries to deal with sin, whether you get rid of the sin by ritual or, or whatever, Jesus makes it a non-issue anymore. For one thing, he, he was a sacrifice for the whole thing. So that doesn't even have to be brought up anymore, but then the action of it is his life in us that changes us. I'm a changed person. You're a changed person because of the one that lives in us, not because we were real good at stopping it, yeah. <laughs> right? Yeah. I think uh, one of the indications that you're in this uh, more legalism or more religion is it's very hard and there's a lot of uh, effort involved and, and, and sort of that heavy, um, chain that you've got to bear it's just this difficult trudging road i yeah, think when you're it puts free it on in us. that you're 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 gliding you're really seeing <laughs> the beauty of god yes. because he's doing things through in you and through you that maybe you tried for years to do yourself and couldn't that do. is so true and believe you feel me. carried you feel you feel like you're gliding you're you you're, do you're, you're, that is a good word i love that mm-hmm. I, I love that. that that's right. when you truly become a free, uh, a free spirit in this, and you're free to love and free to give and free to enjoy. And He came to to give us life, and that life in abundance, and it's in here. Yeah. So I guess I guess we we just want to be sure that 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 people would know that we're not against anybody. anybody. <laughs> we're not against, and and we don't want to use that word religion lightly in the sense of like, like there's some people we don't like because they're in certain religions or denominations. Yeah. No, 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 no. Because if, if you're not really in the grace uh, camp, I guess you could say, or group, you really wouldn't understand what, what you meant unless you listened to a message like this. Right. So we want to just kind of open our arms a little bit and say, we're not against any group of people. We're just talking to the heart. Mm-hmm. And, yeah, and we're and not even so much against things. So that's why we, that's another reason we wanted to talk about this because we'll mention the, the word religion or legalism to, to show the contrast of what we're not talking about. But, but we don't want people focused on hating religion. Yeah. The focus is on loving, loving Jesus, Jesus, loving the Christ that's in us and enjoying that. And the rest of it takes, you know, we don't, we don't get rid of something in our own life because we hate it. Yeah. I mean, if we did, I would not have struggled with anything, you know, yeah. once I came to Christ, because there was a lot of things I, I hated and I, and, I, and I struggled. Like you said, it's a, you, it's, it's a trudge. It's a, because it puts it on us. And that's one thing that, that a lot of religious idea will do is it will put the burden of dealing with the sin back on us somehow. Mm-hmm. And uh, we got some good news that there is no there there is no burden of sin to be put upon you. It's all taken on him. Yeah. And he makes it a non-issue. Now it's relational. Mm-hmm. 
-hmm. It's not a it's not a sin question for the believer. It's 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 relational, you know. Mm -hmm. Find out, learn of me. He says, mm -hmm. I'm meek and I'm humble. You know, he he loves us. It reminds me where this lady at one of your one of the meetings we were at a couple years ago had come to you. She was really struggling with quitting smoking. Yeah, and uh, she was just really hard on herself and really working at it and. And you said just to drop it, mm -hmm. to stop trying to quit the cigarettes and focus on God's loving mm -hmm. her and that and that it would drop off. And yeah. you know what? It did. Yeah. Because it, that, that harshness and that, you know, really working at it was actually exciting the desire to <laughs> Exactly. And <laughs> I not... and I could I sensed it in that sense. Now there's been other times when people would say, you know, I want help with it and you can pray for them yeah. and, and help it was that, that way. Particular individual. But in this particular individual I could sense that there was a religious something about it. This person yeah. was trying to fulfill a religious idea mm -hmm. of what I should and should not do. And there was shame and there was condemnation on this person mm -hmm. for not being able to break the habit. And so I wanted to take it off of that, which mm -hmm. if you read the gospels, you'll see Jesus do this. I uh, wanted to take the focus off of that because that's really wasn't either the here nor there uh, with God. And, and, and I, I saw her, she just needs to enjoy the love of God. So I said, don't worry about the smoking right now. You just enjoy God. Yeah. You just let God lo love you. And you just, you just enjoy God. Don't even think about that. Yeah. And because there again, what see what we know is it's the relationship. The fulfillment of the heart is what takes care of everything mm -hmm. else. Another that's another thing. Religion wants to put straight jackets on us mm -hmm. and, and, and 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 it deals more with our behavior. You know, it thinks that the goal is to change our behavior, but Jesus said, No, the goal is to change the nature, change mm -hmm. the heart. And that changes the motivations, which changes yeah. the behavior. I mean, he said to the Pharisees, who were the, um, you know, religious system of they the, were the time. They were the cl squeakiest clean you're there were. You're so um, concerned with the outside of the cup. Right. That right. you're not seeing the inside. And, yep. and really what I love about Jesus is he came for our hearts, the for inside. the inside of us. And he empowered us that way. This is where the power is at. Yeah. It's in knowing him. I love this. Um, Gwen, she made this comment. To to know we are loved and accepted by him makes us yes. secure in this life. Never condemned. Wow, so good. I want to say something about so the, good. the security. It When you feel like God loves part of you or God loves you when you're good and he hates you when you're bad... You have this sort of mixture of, of of how you're relating to God and how you see him related to him. So you can never really rest. Mm -hmm. You can never really receive because you're always just on eggshells, uh -huh. not sure of how mm -hmm. you're It becomes based on your performance him. and your merit. And so you really don't experience that overwhelming love of God because you're you're thinking that that depends on on you and yeah. you're always going to mess up you know you're always right. going so to... you'll always have a reason you'll always have a loop loophole for not being loved or blessed or 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 whatever that'll that'll work in the, the mind of your flesh isaiah said that the work of righteousness would be peace and the effect of righteousness would be confidence and assurance forever which means always perpetually so whether you're having a great day and you're just doing all the best Christian activities that, that anyone can do, or whether you're just not having such a good day at all, um, you'll have confidence and assurance in God because it's, you know, the person that loves you mm -hmm. and you know, uh, he's so good. He knows our frame. Yeah. Psalms 103 says he knows that we're but dust. Yes. He's good and he's patient and he's merciful. And I, I found these things out as I began to began to truly know him rather than knowing about him. When I knew about him, I used to say things, boy, God will take you to the woodshed. I'll tell you what, sometimes I think he just, he just took a two before and walked me upside the head the other day and told me, and, and I, and, and when I look back on that, I thought, Rick, that was so not true. Honestly, if I'm honest with you now that, that I know I've never been taken to the woodshed. I've been corrected many, many times and I love it mm -hmm. because it, it it straight it, it it corrects my thinking is what happens the wrong ideas it just it shows me truth I get corrected a lot but I don't get taken to the woodshed God doesn't get angry with me God does not punish me for my sins the Bible says He doesn't and He doesn't that's not an issue anymore it's all about relation now it's all about Him loving us 
in all of our weakness, in all of our foolishness, that is love. That is big love, unconditional love, mm-hmm. and it's an amazing love. And that's the only kind of love that fulfills our lives and our hearts. And with that, you can bear all things, believe all things. You can, you have always have hope. Everything is fulfilled uh, in that love. John, the disciple, got it right. He was the one that saw through everything. And he says, God is love. Mm. Boom. Mm-hmm. <laughs> I think, too, if you're, if you're someone who has said, you know, oh, God hit me by, you know, hit me with a two by four, mm-hmm. that kind of thing. That might be the way you would treat yourself mm-hmm. or you would, in your frustration with someone like yourself, would feel. Mm-hmm. But to really open your heart to think there's someone higher than that who doesn't react emotionally the way a human being might or or a yeah. hurt human being might right. react. That there's someone who is pure love. I mean, mm-hmm. the Bible is very clear. God is is Mm -hmm. love and he's gentle beth is saying his correction is always gentle that's what i found out yeah he has been nothing i promise you he's never been anything but gentle with me patient with me you know we used to we would teach me say well you know you know a good daddy said said you know he'll 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 take his son out there and he'll give him a good whipping to, to to teach him and and then we then we say, so that's how God is. Well, what is that? That's making God in man's image. Mm-hmm. We're taking a human being and saying God is like that. When the mm-hmm. Bible says God is not a man, <laughs> you know. Yeah. And and rather than rather than than use a thought, in fact, uh, rather than use that as the example, God goes so much higher than that. Mm-hmm. He's someone. You know, I, I tried my best to be a good father, and I would do discipline, and I would correct, and I tried to do it the right way, but. But I wasn't always gentle, you know, mm-hmm. I would have would have liked to be, but I wasn't always gentle. I wasn't always patient. And I was I was a good dad by, you know, most standards, but I wasn't like God is. Mm-hmm. God is always gentle. Well, would you say that your parenting changed when you began to really see God and, and his love for you? Wouldn't you say that it impacted the way you dealt with your children? Oh yeah, the more that you know him, it does. Um, when I really, when the, when the light turned on that God absolutely loves me, no questions mm-hmm. asked, my kids were about grown by then. <laughs> okay. But overall, I mean, overall, I you know, I like I said, I wasn't um, by most people's standards, I was very good with my kids, but. But by God's standard, I was not nearly as gentle yeah. or nearly as patient. But but like you say, as you grow, when you change and you see this, it does change you. My, my in fact, my my idea of child raising is different now mm-hmm. um, than 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 it was in in, in in those because I see the way of the Father and I see what really works. Yeah. Um, you know, I guess for me, I mean, I don't have children myself, but. Even with in relationships with friends who used to kind of challenge me or, or maybe were difficult for me to re- react to or relate with, that the patience in me has grown as yes. I've seen God's patience towards yes, me. Yes, we definitely see that, don't we? And, you know, as I've been talked to in gentle ways by my father, I find that my words are gentle. So I love the examples that you talk about God speaking to you because it almost always goes like this. Son, why, why don't you try this? Or son, look over here. Oh, it's this so good. really lo- loving fatherly, um, you know, He really is. Way. And he's perfect mm-hmm. in that. He is so perfect in that. And and that's what works. That kind of correction. You know, I've had I've had people in in Christianity, people that um had places in my life that have corrected me that were a blessing to me and received me. There've been there've been 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 just a few people that that really they could they could come to me with correction because I knew they loved me and believed in me. They weren't doing it to manipulate me, they weren't doing it just because they wanted me to do what they thought I should do. Yeah. They they cared about me. Then there's been others that tried to correct me, and it didn't come from that same motive. That's not easily received, yeah. and it usually doesn't work. I don't know if it ever worked on me, yeah. Yeah. <laughs> but 
but that's the way it is with God. And, and a, a, the, the wrong type of correction um, that we see a lot in, in earthly life is, that, is a, a discipline of fear mm-hmm. to where, 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 where people will uh, react towards their children and try to bring correction with fear and guilt and shame. Yeah. God is totally not like that. Mm-hmm. He upbraids not, does not put shame mm-hmm. upon us. He, yeah. In fact, he's the only one that can take shame off of us. Right. Um, and he, he just, his love does it because there again, love fulfills. Mm-hmm. A fulfilled heart becomes an unselfish heart. Sure. A fulfilled heart becomes an unneedy, right. a not needy heart. Right. Um, so, temptations are not the same as they used to be. Those things that once were temptations were because I wanted something or I needed something. Mm -hmm. Um, And it takes that temptation Mm -hmm. away the more we know this. Jill says, I was very strict. I would punish my kids by making them write scripture verses a hundred times or 200 times. Mm -hmm. Wish I could raise them all over. Yeah, we all do. And the good thing is like what Crystal says. A lot of us relate to things like that. Uh, but the Lord's got it and he restores. And hes that's another thing. He is just so big. That's what we find out as we get to know him. We find out, wow, he's bigger than than any of my mistakes. He's bigger than anything. He's bigger than any choices, good or wrong choices that we've made. And uh, we were talking about that today where, where it, it's its made me personally not afraid of of making mistakes because I find out God's God's big enough to have it all covered somehow. He can somehow turn it and make it good. Yeah. Um, it's just, he's just, he's altogether lovely. He's absolutely wonderful. And you find that out, not by doctrine, but by yeah. knowing him, by knowing him. And, and you, and you can't know him if you don't know yeah. that he absolutely loves you. That's where it begins. That's mm-hmm. the beginning of the whole thing. Right. And Gwen, that's right. You know, God will, will make even our mistakes to prosper and to be used for mm-hmm. good. You know, that, that scripture in Romans eight, that, you know, he he'll take what was meant for harm. Is that is that the Romans scripture? eight twenty eight? All things, things work, work together, together for, for good our, for our good. And so I think about things in my own life that cho- bit really bad choices that I'd made, and just things for that were that would would had the potential to really cause harm to myself or other people. And I can see how God has worked it into something good. You know, you've been preaching about us being like trees and that our our leaves are for the healing of the nation and our fruit is for food, you know, to nourish the nations, that sometimes those bad things that we we chose or we did, God somehow makes it into he really something does. He is so big. that we're able to use to to feed someone or to mm-hmm. to heal someone by the testimony. They become part of, of our story of that we can changed. use to bless and, I, and see, there's an, a, another idea about us being those trees of righteousness. We're planted by, planted by the rivers of living water. So we're always being satisfied by that. Mm-hmm. And because we're always being fulfilled, we can be fulfillers. Mm-hmm. And it's, that's why he says our, our fruit is for food and our leaves are for the healing of the nation. Mm-hmm. And, um, you know, there have been many wars fought in the name of religion. Mm-hmm. But nobody has started a war that's known knows that God absolutely loves mm-hmm. them. <laughs> yeah, you come to heal. Yeah, not to conquer. Not to conquer. Yeah. yeah, I think that's a really big difference. Is the the motive behind what you're doing? Uh, we were talking today about that scripture where was it uh, James and John? Mm-hmm. They they were in a town that wasn't receiving what they were saying about God and so they wanted or about Jesus. So they wanted to call down fire from heaven and they wanted to destroy it. And they had a, a biblical precedence for that. They right. had you Elijah know did Elijah it. did it. And so come on Jesus, let's do you know, can we yeah. do this? And Jesus was like, wait a minute, like you don't know what spirit you're of. Right. That spirit is is not the spirit that right. I've come in. Right. It's so him. so in um you know a, a legalistic or or what we're calling religion, it's a matter of conquering, making people think, fighting for mm. what they think is right. 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 And whereas what we see as a relationship with Jesus or the way the tree of life operates, mm. 
we're reconcilers, we're healers, mm-hmm. we're big enough to embrace uh, um, people who think differently, people have different ideas. You find out, you, you, you're, you have the heart of God and he so loves the world and you find mm-hmm. out, you start loving the world yeah. instead of being hateful and, and you know despising them yeah. and, and, and so on. You, you care yeah. and you begin this to... Is- this Understand. is our group and this is the bad group yeah. and we're going to stay with our group and be against the mm-hmm. bad group. You start walking outside your group little walls and mm-hmm. go, wow, these are people God loves. And, you, you know? and you're right. Because you, you, don't, you don't feel that way towards people when the love of God is known, when you know the love of God in your heart. Uh, Michael and Kim said something okay. about, about the not afraid of making mistakes. No. And I think they brought a, a good... Uh, picture of the difference between uh, religion and uh, uh, between that, that and religion and, and uh, so he's saying legalism. not not afraid of making mistakes so well said and the exact opposite of the concept of religion and legalism because because legalism demands oh, from that us you'd be afraid to make yeah, a mistake because we're the ones that make it or break it. In, in a legalistic transactional type of, sure. of, of, of thing. And so you don't have to be afraid of it. When there was a time when I was afraid of making mistakes because I mm-hmm. thought if I make a mistake, then I don't get blessed or I lose the favor of God or people would say you'd even lose the anointing or the Holy Spirit or, mm-hmm. you know, and all those kinds of things. And see, how, how did, the, and, and people taught that. How did they get that idea? By coming up with what made sense to them in their flesh. Sure. And, and, and really, when we're talking about religion, we're talking about things that are, that are made up in the name of God that are not God. Mm-hmm. And uh, legalism permeates, uh, permeates it so much. Uh, but with, relation, with relationship, you're not afraid of making mistakes. When someone loves you, you're not, you're, you're, you're not afraid of, of messing up in front yeah, of them. because you know you'll be corrected in a loving way. You know that mm-hmm. they'll be with yeah. you. Or... And you know that, know that they're for you. You know, mm-hmm. I remember, um, you know, playing baseball and, and I hit the ball over into the, hit the, I broke the neighbor's window. <laughs> and so we all run over there and the, our, our neighbor's staying outside looking at it. And, and uh, I look at him and he goes, he goes, well, you want to tell your dad about it? And I said, sure. So I run in and I tell, I tell dad about it. Now, if 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 I if I think he hates me, if I think this is going to ruin my or my relationship with him or or whatever, then I don't go tell dad. I go run away somewhere. Yeah, you tell him. <laughs> but I know it'll be okay. <laughs> if when you know when you know someone loves you, you can tell them things. Yeah. When you know somebody loves you, you can tell them how you've maybe have done something that that wasn't good toward them. You can mm-hmm. you can admit things. You can say things. Um, because you, you know it won't affect you. And with God, nothing we do, nothing we do affects his relationship with us. Mm-hmm. Uh, the Bible is clear. What will separate us from that from love, love of God? God? Nothing. Yeah. Gwen says, you want people to know the heart of God for them and you cannot force love on people. That's, that's a wonderful, yeah. wonderful thing. And that's, that's true. And, and, and that's why, and there again, a lot of times with a religious mindset, we, it, it, it attempts to, to force behavior yeah. upon us. Well, it's like, I'm going to love you. And then if you don't change, or if I don't see a difference, mm-hmm. then forget then, it. Then I won't. But really the truth is you're, you're privileged. You're, you, you get the honor, the opportunity to, to with God show love to a person who has every right to receive or not receive, but you get to give it. And that is what is so rewarding is that you've gotten to give it. It's an honor. Regardless of how they respond. It's an honor to do it. And and God has given that love to us. So, you know, uh, guys, God loves you whether you know it or not, whether you want to believe it or not, God does. So you might as well believe it and enjoy it, mm-hmm. right? Because right. it's, it's not going to stop him from loving you. He's going to love you regardless. So you might as well enjoy it and believe it and, and, uh, and dance in it. Yeah. <laughs> have a good time. See, we, we, what we're about is we want you to have heaven right now today and have, and have heaven tomorrow. And that can only come from what we're talking about here, from that thing that fills the heart. That's him. Mm-hmm. 
his love, his joy uh, uh, that, that, that fills your heart. That's where heaven comes in. That's, that's the real riches. That is the real abundant life. Mm -hmm. Jesus didn't come to, to give us money. He didn't come to give us fame or power. He came to give us a life, mm -hmm. the true riches of God. And, uh, and, and, and I always am so excited about this because after so long of trying different things, different things that looked biblical to me to attain rest for my soul, peace, favor, joy, blessing, so on, I've come to, I, I've, I've, I've struck the main vein mm -hmm. and I found peace and rest for my soul. And that is worth more than all the weight of gold in this world right. that mm -hmm. I am. A, I have become, you become a very, very wealthy person when you find peace and rest in your soul. When you find love in your heart, mm -hmm. you become very, very wealthy and you become like Zacchaeus, like here. Somebody want this? I can give away as much as I have. Mm -hmm. You know, he said, "I'll give away half of my own." That means I'm giving all that. I'm giving away just as much as I've as as, as I've uh, got for myself. And he and you become that way because Zacchaeus realized Jesus had made him wealthy that night, mm -hmm. wealthier than all the money that he was trying to get could ever make him. Mm -hmm. And so he had plenty to uh, plenty to give. Yeah. He became a generous man instead of a taking man, mm -hmm. which is what he was doing before. Mm -hmm. And that, that simple relationship with Jesus is what did that. That's beautiful. Nothing else, mm -hmm. nothing else. He changes us all that way, doesn't he? Yeah, and that's how, that, that's how it works. And Jesus was never against Zacchaeus. Mm -hmm. Zacchaeus probably assumed that he was. Here he is, here's a, here's a holy man, here's a prophet, here's mm -hmm. a, you know, some say he's the Messiah, the Christ, you know. Mm -hmm. Uh, surely he doesn't want anything to do with someone like me. Well, that's what the legalistic Pharisees were feeding him, you know. Mm -hmm. Right. Um, and almost, yeah, you often say this, like to kind of give the Pharisees in context, they weren't trying to be bad people. Mm -hmm. They were trying to lead people in the right direction. It just doesn't work. Yeah, it <laughs> and just so wasn't Jesus the right said, direction. Jesus had to come and say, no, 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 like, let me show you real, real life. Yeah, real they, life. Uh, there's a way that seems right to a man, but the end thereof uh, is, is death. Uh, Joanne mentioned something there that I want to uh, make a comment about. It says that God covered Adam and Eve from, from the shame in the garden. One thing about that, though, is he, you know, what they were trying um, uh, didn't work. And so God made animal skins to cover them. And so then we see the first blood sacrifice and we see the types and shadows like Joanne's bringing out. But in reality, throughout history, man has still lived with shame. Mm -hmm. Man still struggles with shame until what we're talking about yeah. <laughs> becomes reality to him. Yeah. Until they know this uh, unconditional and big love of God, mm -hmm. that's what takes away. That's what finally did it for me. Even though I've been a Christian many years, yeah. I still carried a sense of shame because I was never quite good enough. And, and if I were to compare myself to many other Christians, I was doing a lot, but, but in my own heart, I felt like it, I was always coming up short and I, I carried a shame with it. I, I didn't, I didn't, didn't, didn't pray enough. I didn't do enough good. I didn't, I still had things that were unchristlike in my life, you know, still things about me that I didn't want to tell other people mm -hmm. because of the shame that, that, that I carried certain things. I, I still wasn't ready to talk about because of the shame that I carried and that love that love took it all to where I could, didn't have to cover the shame. I could be uncovered. I could be naked in a sense, naked and not ashamed. Yeah. Uh, That's really good. When you can be transparent about your weaknesses is really uh, the ability to be naked and not ashamed. And like you were saying a while ago, the, the mistakes that, that we made because we're not ashamed, uh, they become a tool in our hands. We can share that with other people and, mm -hmm. Uh, and, and, and it always becomes a story of, of redemption and God's graciousness and mm -hmm. patience with us. He's just, he's, he's altogether lovely. There's, <laughs> there's nothing, no darkness about him at all. He's just good, 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 good. <laughs> uh, Gwen said she saw someone who had a, a billion dollars, but they didn't know God. She says, I would never trade Knowing him places. is everything. <laughs> and having money is neither here nor there. Having money is, you can do some fun things with it, some good things with it. But, 
but uh, without knowing God, then you can just be a poor person with money. With a lot of money. You used yeah. to be a poor person with a lot of money. We, there are a lot of those. We see a lot of those in the public eye. Mm -hmm. And you feel sorry for them. You don't, you don't want to be like them. You feel sorry for them because yeah. they're just, they've got a, they're just uh, got a lot of money, but they're, but they're poor. You can, and they usually harm themselves with all that money. Mm -hmm. Yeah, <laughs> they it's, usually it's, use it's, it to do harm to themselves. There's only one thing. That's that's him, his love. Mm -hmm. His love. It's really true that God so loved the world that He came, that He gave. So you know, He just wants all of us to see that. He just wants us to see. And the way you, the way you see, and the way you receive is like you say. You just consider it. Just think on this mm -hmm. just just um you let, know, uh, yeah think let, on it and consider it because him him in us the holy spirit will re then reveal it mm -hmm. will make it reality he, jesus said he will convince you mm -hmm. of this righteousness yeah yeah and it wouldn't have to doesn't have to be a legalistic thing where you you know you sit down every day for two hours and you read certain no because it's the or, relationship with yeah. the person that is teaching us yeah. it's 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 the interaction he's weaving his ways into You can us. go for a walk. You can listen to a, a podcast. You can read a, a scripture. You, there's a lot of, a lot of, uh, a lot of things. Or do like me, just look at the trees and say, I love you, father. You're yeah. wonderful. <laughs> yeah. So, um, anyway there, I would love, I would take Jesus over all the money in the world. Yes. Every time I think about how much God loves us, I'm amazed. I am too. I am too. Every single day, it doesn't stop. It doesn't doesn't get old. It's just, it, it's overwhelming. It really, really, really is. I mean, we're using these words. I don't want to just, I don't want to just, you know, it's hard. There's no words. There are no words to de describe what he really is to us and how he really, he, he makes us feel and how he fulfills us. Uh, but we want everybody to know that we don't want everybody to conform to us to a code a, a set of behavior codes I mean yeah. that doesn't do anything for yeah. uh, For what we're talking about here yeah. Know the love of God Ephesians 3 know the love of God so you can be filled with yeah. the fullness of Christ That's good. You want to have you want them to have a connection not just a, a list but a connection Yeah, Crystal said people are looking for the love that only the Lord can give that's what every heart is longing for whether they know it or not that's the one thing that satisfies <laughs> he totally loves walking, walking dust. dust amazing he does <laughs> that's good Jill mm -hmm. that's good well we better sign off let y'all mm -hmm. go go to bed and uh, have a good night's sleep um, we uh, hey this was good your uh, thanks for all your input this was yeah. some real good sharing we yeah we appreciate your um, your input and your comments and your uh, yeah questions and all yeah we Helps love us and we love contacting with you we love yeah. we love each church that and interaction love is good. seeing you guys again so next tuesday we are actually going to be leaving on oh tuesday we'll be on the road to on tuesday to, we're so. gonna go up north for yeah. thanksgiving see my family over the river and through so, the woods yeah we're heading to pennsylvania on tuesday so we won't do e church that Tuesday, but the following Tuesday. We'll be back. I think we'll be. We'll be home. Same we'll be bat time. That same bat station. All right. <laughs> so anyway, have a great Thanksgiving if we don't see you. Kim and Michael, we love you. Thank you for joining us. Crystal, um, Jill, Gwen. So good to see you. Beth, Michelle. <laughs> I can't say everybody's name. Uh -huh. We just love you. Happy Thanksgiving. We'll see you. Uh, two weeks. In two weeks. Bye.